Hello, welcome to lesson five of the Firebase Tutorials video series. In this lesson, we're going to go over how data is stored in the Firebase real-time database. So right now, I'm looking at the Firebase app that we created back in lesson two, and I simply clicked on database right here on the left-hand side. And what it presents to me is this empty database here. So this is the URL or path to our database that we don't really have to worry about because it's in the config file which we put into the uh, the Xcode project. And this line here says that the default security rules uh, users need to be authenticated before they can read or write. And we're just going to dismiss this now because we're going to change those rules uh, in the next lesson when we actually read and write data. For now, I want to talk about this, this empty database right here. And if you're coming from a traditional database background with SQL, you're used to tables and rows, uh, but you don't see any of that here. All of the data in our Firebase database is stored as a JSON tree. And if you're unfamiliar with JSON, it's a notation used to describe objects using key value pairs. And they're organized in collections like dictionaries and arrays, forming a tree-like structure. When you're working with third-party APIs and feeds, oftentimes the data is transmitted as JSON because it's lightweight and fast. So right here, we're going to put in some data uh, into our JSON tree. You're not really going to get to see the JSON syntax because this is sort of a visual uh, way. But what's important for this right now is that you understand how the data is stored as key value pairs or uh, name value pairs as Firebase calls it. Okay, so let's create a simple piece of data here. I'm going to click this plus icon and this messaging-app-c3680, this is kind of our root node right here. And what I'm creating underneath is a key value pair or a name value pair. You can think of this name or key as an ID for this value right here. I'm going to put customer1 as Harry. That's a simple key value pair where the key is customer one and the value is Harry. And if I wanted this piece of data, Harry, I would simply go down this path, pass in customer one and get Harry back. Let's do another one. Let's say I have another customer and it's Tom. So in order for me to fetch Tom, I would need customer two. Now things start to get interesting because we can nest data. So let me show you what that means. If I add a node here, let's make the key customers. And for the value, instead of um, specifying a value, I'm going to hit plus again. And the value of customers is another key value pair. So now I have customers and the value, what, what I get back if I pass in customers, is I get back this key value pair instead. So now I can start to build out my data like this. If I retrieve all the data at this node customers, I would get back customer one, Harry, customer two, Tom. Now let's build upon this. Let's say that we have more data per customer. We don't just have a certain name like that. So, oops, I think I deleted all of my data here. Customers, and let's say I have customer one, but instead of the value just being Harry, what if we had even more data on him? And we had his name was Harry, so let's add that. But in addition, we also have, let's say Harry's age. So let's say he's 20. So that's, you know, one customer, and we have another ID, customer two, uh, and the value instead of being Tom, you know, is another set of key value pairs like that. And I have Tom's age as well. So now you can start to see why it uh, looks like a tree or why it's called the JSON tree, because we have our root node here, and then we have this branch customers. And then inside there, we have a bunch of other key value pairs. If I, you know, go down this path, customer one, that's the ID, uh, I get back another two key value pairs like that. 
So even though you can start to nest things like this, you don't want to go too far. Um, you can actually go down uh, 32 levels deep in terms of nesting. Right now, I think we're at two or three levels, but you don't want to get much further than that because when it comes time to retrieving your data um, and you retrieve this node here, it actually retrieves all of the nested data below it. Even if you're only looking for one little piece of data, um, you're going to retrieve everything under it. So it doesn't, it's not efficient to have giant nested trees. Instead, you want to flatten your data. So that's something that you want to keep in mind when you're designing your data. Uh, there is a good article here in the documentation. I'm just going to put this link in the description and you can read um, this little article here. It tells you how the data is structured like we've covered a JSON tree here, but there's also some best practices for structuring your data and it gives you a couple of examples which you can follow. Okay, going back to the database here. So an example of keeping our uh, structure flat would be, let's say that uh, I also have purchase data. So customer one here, Harry, he bought, let's say he bought two products. I could create some more data underneath this tree right here, but I can also do it this way where, um, let's say we have another node here, orders, and the value for that would be, uh, let's say, you know, customer one, and the value for that would be, let's say order one, something like that. And let's just add an order two. something like that. So now I've separated the order data from the customer data. So if I just wanted a little detail on customer one, I could come through this customer's path and grab that data without also downloading all of the order data. And if I wanted order data on customer one, I could come down this node or this branch of the tree and go down orders and grab customer one and kind of get his orders that way. So it requires a little bit of foresight on how you're going to use your data in your app. But what you want to think about is how to uh, efficiently download only the data you need for the screen that you're presenting to the user, essentially. So in our messages app, um, the structure is actually going to be pretty simple. We're just going to have one node called posts, and then each post is going to uh, have an automatic ID. I'll show you how to create that and then the message body or the text for that post. So now that you know how the data is structured, we can start to save data and write data into this database in the next lesson. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.